And my name is Roy Mutalik. I'm an application engineer here at Design Point. Um, and uh, as you can see, certified burger flipper, beer drinker. You know, I'm really pumped about Memorial Day weekend. I'm sure you guys are all as well. And uh, really ready to get started with that and uh, get into some good barbecue stuff here. But first, uh, let's talk a little bit about design validation through uh, SolidWorks simulation. See what that can do for you guys. Some really cool stuff here I've got to share with you. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. So grilling and chilling, so we've been doing all afternoon. We'll keep it going here. Um, in simulation, I first want to talk about what is SolidWorks simulation, give us an overview of the actual product. Um, and then we're going to run into two different simulation studies here. We're going to do something called a linear static simulation and a transient thermal simulation, and all applying to our, our nice grills that we've got here. And then lastly, we'll kind of just close by talking about um, why do I need design validation? Really, where are the benefits? If we haven't seen those already um, from using this, uh, we'll certainly discuss those. Uh, again, a quick 30-minute uh, session here, so we'll have to keep it moving, uh, but some really cool stuff we're going to see here. So first, what is uh, design validation? What is SOLIDWORKS simulation as a tool? Um, as may have some familiarity with it, uh, it is a tool for designers and engineers to allow you to effectively simulate your designs um, within the software. So the idea is before we actually build anything, uh, can we see if our CAD model that we create actually works the way that we'd like? Um, there's several different pieces or sort of branches to simulation, even in SOLIDWORKS specifically. Um, there's structural simulation, which uh, you may have heard of as uh, using the term FEA, which is what it is, a finite element analysis tool. Um, and that's what we're going to take a look at here today. Uh, there are, in addition, uh, SOLIDWORKS simulation packages as well for fluid flows. So you may be familiar with computational fluid dynamics, or CFD. Uh, there's a module for that in SOLIDWORKS flow simulation, um, as well as injection molding through something called SOLIDWORKS plastics to allow you to see a plastic mold flow and how that actually flows, uh, plastic actually flows into an injection molded part and sustainable de design for a uh, life cycle assessment. So several different simulation design validation tools that we have. Again, our focus here today will be the FEA package of uh, SOLIDWORKS simulation. Um, again, the idea of these, before we actually manufacture something or before we even prototype it, let's see what we can come up with as uh, alternatives to design or where is our design falling short? What could we be doing better with it? Or as I'll discuss later, maybe what are we kind of spending too much on. Um, and the end goal, of course, let's reduce the design, the number of prototypes that you're creating. Um, let's shorten that design cycle. Um, and as a result, of course, that's going to be saving us money here. So with that here, I've picked something a little bit lighter. We're going to talk about a couple of different simulations here in uh, SOLIDWORKS. So I'm going to jump over to SOLIDWORKS here. And here's our nice model that we've been working with all day here, our grill. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit over here. And sitting on the side, we've got this spatula. And uh, that's what I'm going to be using here to flip our burgers or flip our steaks, which are actually sitting inside here. Um, but you know, I've got some concerns. You know, a buddy of mine picked this up on his way over. I had forgotten the spatula, and he actually just ran to the dollar store and picked up a couple. Um, so he grabbed those uh, those nylon spatulas that they have there, those, those cheap, flimsy ones. And I've got some concerns that these big burgers that I've got uh, are not going to. Uh, it's not going to be able to flip them here. It's not going to hold up under the weight of those steaks or weight of those burgers. Um, so let's see if SOLIDWORKS simulation can help me out with that. What I'm going to do is run something called a linear static simulation on the nylon spatula here. Uh, so the idea is when I flip this, on this side over here, I'm going to actually be holding on to that spatula. So that will be sort of fixed in place. And we're going to put the weight of that burger patty sort of downwards on this front end where we would actually flip that. And we want to see, you know, is this dollar store spatula going to hold up? Don't get me wrong, I love the dollar store, but uh, I think this is a little bit flimsy. I don't know if, if we're going to be able to flip these burgers or, uh, or what's going to happen. Um, or more so than that, you know, even if it's not failing or not actually you know, breaking, do we have room for improvement in how it's performing? And that's, of course, what you're going to be assessing with your, uh, your design through the process. Beyond just, does it do what it needs to do? Where is there room for improvement? Uh, so that's what we'll look at here with this spatula. So with that said, let's jump right into it here. I'll go ahead and grab my spatula, and I'll just go ahead and open it up. 
Now, SolidWorks simulation is actually integrated right within my SolidWorks interface, just like a lot of these tools that we've been seeing here today. So I go to my add-ins and I simply enable my simulation. And it'll show right up here as a separate set of commands right on my toolbar. What I'm going to do here is set up a study. So I just select, I want to create a new simulation study. And here I have a wide variety of different study types I can run. So depending on the different type of failure mode you're concerned with, you know, maybe a long slender structure, you might be worried about buckling. There's a separate study type associated with each of those. In this case, I'm running something called a static study or linear static, a simple simulation of the structure of a component here. So we'll go ahead and select that and I'll hit OK. And it generates that study here and it automatically brings in the information from the model itself here. So I'm in the simulation environment, but I don't have to do an import of that model. I don't have to translate anything to get it into my simulation package. It's right there for me. We're just going to work our way down the tree here uh, through so our SOLIDWORKS commands and apply what we need to actually create this simulation. So the first thing we'll notice, the material. So our flipper's here, and it's got the nylon applied to it here, that nylon material that it's actually made out of. So again, I'm not reworking anything. It's all information that's in the model that's just being leveraged again right here. What I'm going to do in this study is set up that simple situation of holding it at one end and loading it at the other. So I do that through something called fixtures and then loads. So it's as simple as a right click, and we tell it we want to create a fixed geometry. Now, if you're familiar with FEA, there's a wide variety of different fixtures available, and those are all translated directly into SOLIDWORKS here, roller sliders, hinge, um, as well as advanced fixtures. In this simple example I'm running here, I'm just simulating as if I'm holding it. So I'm just going to fix this back face here that I have, selecting the face and hitting the check to accept. And we can see our green icons on there uh, indicating that, in fact, we do have that face fixed in place. So the reason you need to fix it some face, some surface in a simulation study is otherwise as soon as I start applying a load, this entire body is just going to translate. It's just going to take off into space. And we don't want that. So we just fix it how it would be in real life. Next, I'm going to go ahead and apply an external load to it. In this case, it's going to be the weight of my burger. So you can see here I've got the face that I'd be using to actually flip that burger. I'll just go ahead and apply a load to it so I've got a wide variety of different loads that I can apply here. You can see torques, pressures, uh, uh, centrifugal loads. In this case, I'm just using a simple force. I want to simulate the weight of that burger here. So I'll go ahead and select the face where it would be sitting. And I just have to tell it how much force I'm applying downwards here. Now, I usually make quarter pound burger patties. So I'll go ahead and key that in as a quarter of a pound downwards there. And it's really as simple as that, with the check to accept. And now we can see, not only do we have our symbols signifying that we're fixed on this end here, but we've got the force going downwards on this end over here, simulating the weight of that patty. What we're going to do next is something called mesh the body. So it's as simple as right click and create mesh. Now, if you're familiar with FEA, I'm sure you are familiar with what a mesh is actually doing here. Um, in short, the software has to break it up into these finite elements, little, little thick elements. And that's what it actually applies a series of equations to, uh, partial different equations that it's going to solve, in order to actually come up with my results of how this is behaving. SolveWorks simulation has a robust automatic mesher in it. So I simply select my parameters and hit mesh. And it'll just take a couple of seconds here as it goes through and actually creates the mesh for that. So we now see the result here. What it's done is automatically broken up my 3D geometry into these finite elements, as they call. Each one of these is an individual element that the simulation solver will then utilize to actually generate those results. So it's able to understand that it's fixed and it's being loaded at these elements to kind of interpolate to create those results. So with that being said, we're meshed. We're ready to go. Let's go ahead and run this study. So simply right click and run. And the solver will go ahead and chew on it. And it'll take a couple of seconds here for it to give me my result. And uh-oh, it's giving me a warning here. Excessive displacements were calculated in the model. That doesn't sound good. I'm going to hit no to this, this uh, to allow it to continue solving here. 
And sure enough, there are results here. So what I'm looking at is something called a von Mises stress plot. It's actually plotting the stress internal to this as a result of that loading. And you can see here simply at the region where that necks here, where it joins, we're getting a large amount of stress. Now, thankfully, if I compare that to the actual strength of that material, you know, this spatula isn't breaking as a result of that. You can see there's almost a factor of 10 difference here um, in the actual stress it would take to actually break this, or what's called having that material in yield. So we're not breaking, but if I take a look at my displacement plot, we've got another story here. So I'm going to switch to a different view, and I'll just verify quickly here and make sure that SOLIDWORKS is showing this in what's called true scale. So it's showing on screen exactly as much displacement as it would have in real life. And we're seeing as a result of solving those equations, it's reading out for me, I'm displacing one point, almost 1.7 inches. Now that's a lot for this nylon spatula. So what I'm seeing from this is, while my spatula isn't breaking, it's certainly bending quite a bit just under the weight of that burger. So that's going to make it a little bit difficult to flip if it's kind of flexing that much in my hand as I'm working through this here, as I'm trying to scrape that burger off of the grill. It's really flexing that much under that load. You know, maybe this spatula really isn't going to hold up or it's going to make it difficult for me to do my job. So if we recognize that in our design, what we would want to do is say, well, what can we do to alleviate that concern? But instead of going to the dollar store and buying that spatula, what if I had bought a nice stainless steel spatula? Same exact shape, but made of stainless steel. It will certainly be much stiffer, much be able to handle this load. So let's give that a try here real quick. In SOLIDWORKS simulation, it's as simple as changing my material. So I'll instead edit this and apply a stainless steel material to this. I don't have to change any of my other setup parameters. I'll just tell it to run the study again. And in just a moment here, it will solve that simulation again based on the different material, and we'll see a different result. So again, here's our stress plot. We can see huge difference in the yield strength of that material, so we have no concerns about it failing. If I take a look at my displacement plot, very different result here. That stainless steel spatula, you can see barely any deflection, 0 0.008 inches of deflection here. So it's much sturdier being that stainless steel spatula there. That's really what we're going to want to use for flipping these burgers, and particularly those big steaks that we got on there. So let's update our model quickly. Taking the results from simulation, it's as simple as coming back to my model here, and I'll apply the new material to it. I'll grab that stainless steel that I was using. And I'll also just make sure to tell it to apply the appearance of that so it looks correct. So there's our corrected spatula here. And sure enough, if I go back to the barbecue here, we can see we've got our stainless steel spatula now sitting there on our grill. So we're ready to go to flip those burgers. So the next thing I got to do in order to flip these burgers, let's open up the grill here. So I'll go to grab the handle and Ouch, that's a hot handle. You know, from grilling all this time here, the heat coming off has gotten into and conducted into my stainless steel handle here on my grill, and it's going to make it difficult for me to actually open this grill up. So that's what I want to analyze next. Based on the heat coming off of this, how long do I have to be able to hang on to this handle, or how long will it take to heat up to a point where I can no longer touch it? So this is going to apply a different study type, something called a transient thermal analysis. Again, the idea is our grill is hot, and it's at some temperature, let's say 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And as a result of the conduction of heat into the handle there, that handle is going to heat up as well. So at what point is it too hot to touch, which I'm deeming as 120 degrees Fahrenheit, where it would probably burn your hand. Um, so we want to know in minutes how long we have and realistically, at what point we're going to need to grab one of those oven mitts to be able to open this guy up. So let's jump right into that here. I'll go ahead and open up my handle here. And I'm going to set up that transient thermal analysis here. So again, simulation embedded right within SOLIDWORKS here. I'll just go ahead and tell it I want to create a new study. And we're going to run, in this case, a thermal study. The area of interest is really our temperatures that are involved. 
the first thing I'm going to do here is tell it that it's a transient study. And the way I do that is by just marking it in the properties here. We're going to run the study for a total of 15 minutes, which is 900 seconds here. And we can give it a time increment at which we'd like to be able to look at results. So I'll put in here for this maybe 10 seconds. So what that means is when it solves, it's going to allow us to look at the results every 10 seconds for 15 whole minutes. So I'll hit OK to that. Next thing we're going to do is define the initial temperature of this handle. So I'll go ahead and apply a temperature load here of an initial temperature. So that's saying when the study starts, we're at some certain temperature. And in this case, we'll say it's 87 degrees Fahrenheit outside. So we simply apply that load here. And so it knows to start at 87 degrees. Next, we're going to go ahead and apply the thermal load as a result of the heating of the body of that grill. So I'll simply apply another temperature load here. And I'll apply it just to these faces here, this face here and this face here, through which it would be conducting that heat. We'll say that's at a fixed temperature of 350 degrees. That's the temperature that's conducting through into that handle. All right. That's really all there is to our setup here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit run here. The first thing it's going to do is that mesh, just the same as with, as with the previous study. It's got to break it up into those finite elements, those little uh, thick elements that it can then use to actually create those differential equations. Uh, beyond that, what it's going to do in this transient study, it launches my solver here. And you can notice it's actually iterating each of those steps. So I put in 15 minutes or 900 seconds. And I said capture every 10 seconds. So 900 divided by 10 is a total of 90 steps. So it's running through and actually calculating at each different time what is the status, what is the temperature of each of those nodes generated by those elements within this handle. So even here you can see with just my default mesh settings and my quick setup how really quick it is to get these studies solved. Um, it's just going to take another minute here as it runs through these last 30 or so steps um, to reach completion here. And then we'll be able to have our results to take a look at. So when it finishes up here, what we'll see is it's going to start showing me a temperature plot. So my output, again, in the thermal study is temperatures in large cases. Now, this was a transient study. Again, we're looking at over a 15-minute period. So the key piece to look at is that this temperature plot is showing is at a specific time. You can see time step 90, or this is at the end of 15 minutes, what it looks like. And you can see that handle is getting as high as 207 degrees in temperature. So that's certainly no good here. You know, it's already too hot. It's well above that 120 degree mark at 15 minutes. What I can actually do is look at this plot individually and tell it I want to look at a specific time step. So maybe I want to look at 30 seconds, how hot it's gotten. So I'll hit the check ticks up there. And you can see here at 30 seconds, it's just beginning to conduct. That temperature is just starting to rise. It's largely still near that ambient temperature of 87 degrees, but we're starting to see near where it's joined to the grill there. It's really heating up. A nice way to look at these transient studies is an actual animation of the plot. So what this is actually going to do is generate each of those plots here, each of those 90 steps, and play them in sequence here to actually show an animation. Over 15 minutes, this is how the temperature changes in this handle. We'll take just another minute here as it's generating the frames. Now the animation will play for us. So you can really get an idea over that 15 minute period how the temperature is changing and sort of at what rate where those locations of the temperature changes. Obviously, it happens most quickly towards the end here, where it reaches that 350. And then it kind of propagates back towards the middle here. And at the end, we're reaching that highest temperature sort of in the middle here. So really a nice way to be able to see that heat conduction through that material as a function of time. Now, this is great, but it's going to take a little bit of post-processing for me to get my answer to my original question, which was, how long do I have before I'm going to need that oven mitt to touch it? So at what time does that temperature reach 120 degrees? So let's take a look at that. 
I could easily come in here to this plot definition and start clicking through each of those. But that's very manual. I'd have to look at each iteration. You know, it's 30 seconds, I gotta go higher. Oh, it was 90 seconds too far, you know. Kind of iterate that. That's not really the way we want to do it, and it's not giving us a good idea of what the trend is. So instead, what I'm gonna do is set up something here called a sensor. In SolidWorks, a sensor is just a parameter that we want to track. And we're just telling the software that that's the case. So I'm gonna apply a temperature sensor here of the model minimum. So the minimum temperature in the model anywhere. And let's set our units here correctly to Fahrenheit. And instead of across all steps, that's gonna say look at any of those steps, what's the minimum. I'm gonna say it's a transient sensor. So it's gonna say at each step, read out for me what the model minimum temperature is. So we'll go ahead and do that. And what we'll see now is the sensor will actually generate and it will show us that information. So if I come up to the sensor now, I can actually look at a graph of this here and see with my first iteration being at 10 seconds and my last being at 900 seconds or, or 15 minutes later, how does that temperature rise? And this is the model minimum. So assuming that you're touching it at the location where it is the coldest. So looking at that here, we can very easily see the trend graph of how that increases as a result of that conduction. And from here, I can actually get my answer. If I look across here, notice it's giving me a little tooltip telling me the information. So here at 120.25 uh, degrees, it's saying it's 375 seconds. You can kind of see that at the bottom directly below my cursor, below where it says thermal there. 375, 120.25. So that's saying I'm at 120.25 degrees at 375. 0.8 seconds. So I'll do some quick math here. 375 seconds divided by 60. Oops. Try that again here. 375 divided by 60. That's about 6.25 minutes. That's all I got here um, that I'll be able to touch it. So within those first six and a quarter minutes, I'll be able to lift that grill and check on how those burgers are doing. But if they take longer than that to grill, I'm gonna to wanna to go grab an oven mitt because I'm gonna burn myself if I try to open it. So that's giving us that result here. We're definitely gonna want that oven mitt handy. We're gonna be grilling for more than six minutes, I'll tell you that. From here, we can start to investigate changing materials. You know, Maybe if we used a different material, it wouldn't heat up as much. That would be as simple as what I had just done in the previous study as changing my material. And I could run the study again. So again, to summarize this here, we can see after six minutes, that handle is gonna to be too hot. And we got that from that transient thermal analysis here, seeing that heat conduction through that handle. So with that being said, I wanted to close up with just a quick uh, bit on why we wanna validate design. Hopefully the presentation I walked you through here shows really the value of that simulation uh, package the answers that we can get, the information we can read. And again, all of this is before I've even created these parts, before I've even built anything. I'm seeing that information, that spatula is too flimsy, I'm not gonna wanna buy that one, and that handle is getting too hot, I'm gonna probably wanna swap that material or come up with some other way, like an oven mitt. So I'm getting the answers to these design questions, these functionality questions, really, in the stage of design. So why would we want to validate design, though? Of course, we're identifying and correcting problems in that design phase. And that's going to reduce and eliminate the potential of rework. You know, imagine if we had manufactured these items and if they're, they're not functional products. You know, our customers aren't going to want to buy these non-functional products. Um, again, the idea, if we can verify our designs before we even prototype, that's going to save us time. It's going to save us money. It's going to save us raw materials. Uh, we're not wasting all that effort going through these prototypes um, that really are just gonna break at the first time we try them here. Um, and all that is gonna contribute to shortening our development cycle. So our idea is if we can even cut down the number of prototypes you're creating, instead of creating 50 prototypes, if you're now only creating five prototypes, um, that's a huge saving in time, in money, in materials, in, in everything and really gonna shorten the amount of time it does take for you to come up with a completed functional product. 
And finally, sort of building on both of those, we're going to design based on a criteria for use and not vice versa, not try to use it based on the design. Um, an example I like to give with that is uh, beyond just making sure something functions, you know, simulation is great for identifying where you're over-designing as well. Example I give a customer of ours that I was working with was designing based on a certain size steel structural member. And the answer to why he was doing that was simply, we've always done it this way. But running a quick simulation study, we were able to see that it was probably about twice as big as it needed to be. And he was, he was spending too much money on those raw materials. So simulation can validate and give you sort of the answer to why are we designing the way that we are. We're designing based on the criteria for use. If it only needs to be strong enough to hold up a certain amount of weight, why are we bothering designing it more so than that? Why are we putting in that, that excess and over-designing it there? That's costing our company money. So with that, there's a great suite of uh, simulation tools that we've got there. Again, I quickly had to just go through two of those there. Um, but hopefully, you got to see some, some value from that. Um, so that should roughly conclude our session here today. What I'll do is just kick it back here to uh, to Jenna, and we'll uh, she'll have a couple of just quick closing remarks. 